It's the Fall Turf Festival. It is Monday. It is a beautiful Monday. We got a fast main track, firm turf course. Ron Nicoletti along with track announcer Pete Aiello. And what a special day it is today, Pete, huh? We have our inaugural uh, pick 10 ticket today. Yeah, the perfect 10 wager with the $25,000 guarantee. It's a 10 cent wager. It's a tough wager to hit, but it'll definitely pay you dividends. $25,000 guaranteed here today, 10 cents. The minimum investment, and it starts on race one. You have to pick the winner of every race here today. We got an announcement we have to make about the uh, daily race form. The I guess the wagering is, uh, menu is wrong. Yes, uh, here the day at Gulfstream Park, and a change for Monday racing programs throughout our winter meet. There will be no multi-leg tickets other than daily doubles. So no pick threes, no pick four, no pick five, no rainbow six. We'll have daily double wagering on every other race. So that will be races one, three, five seven and nine again odd numbered races one three five seven and nine daily double wagering no multi-leg tickets pick threes pick fours pick five pick six takes me out of commission i'll have to go back to old school win play show handicapping here today 54 minutes to first race post time yeah now our first race today you have to have your handicapping hats on right away because this is where the perfect 10 starts it's 10 races throughout the day and this is a seven furlongs so there you see our thing it's a twenty-five thousand dollar guarantee today so uh boy if you can get all 10 winners today you can bring down that whole pool and if not it's uh 60 is paid out to the most winners today 40% is carried over till next Monday. You can only bet this on Mondays. So let's look at our first race. Seven furlongs, three-year-olds and up. Non-winners of a race since April 20th, $6,250. Uh, there's a workout on the four. It was over at Ghost, uh, right here at Gulfstream Park West. And it was 38, the breezing. Uh, also, the jockey on the one is Jose Alvarez. The jockey on the seven, Kristen Dominguez. And as you mentioned, daily double exact to try super and the Pick 10 wagering. Yeah, the perfect 10 starts with this first race. First race of the afternoon. It looks like on paper it's a two-horse race. Ronnie and I both agree on which two they are. They're the two smoking the field who takes a class drop. That's gigantically important here. Uh, going from wide open claimers to time restricted claimers, especially when all these other horses have had just so so form against time restricted claimers. Veteran uh, Gulfstream Park West conditioner Ralph Zadie has Arnie Fontanez riding. Smoking the field, his races are not all that great lately, but he's been against much, much tougher. And from a tactical standpoint, I don't see any speed in here. Smoking the field went to the lead two starts ago and three starts ago. So let's set sort of slow early fractions, but when there's no speed, you can do that. Yeah, and it looks like that certainly the one to beat, and along with the number one horse, Neil Moten, goes from post 13 last time out. Going to break from the rail after rallying from off the face to finish fourth. It was against similar. It was going six furlong. The uh, horse already has a win at this seven furlong distance. Seven previous races, but that one, I used the three and third, and I see that you went with the number five. Yeah, I should correct myself. Smoking the field gets jockey Edgar Zayas yeah. here this afternoon. Motine is a horse that if the field was bigger and the pace was different, it would be a decent horse to use. He's five to one right now. He'll probably be the strong second choice. I don't know that he has anything to close into when he draws the inside. For third, I used the number five horse in here, Guts to Glory. All of his success in his racing career has come on this Gulfstream Park West main track, and he's a horse that, at least in my opinion, has enough tactical speed in the past to put himself in a position early where he could maybe get a minor award in this first race. So now, in the, the perfect 10, do you uh, use two horses in yes, here? I, I, think, you started I, think, with I think you go too deep in here and uh, move and turn the page. There's some tougher races. I actually think the first couple races are really not all that difficult. Famous last words there, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think that if you're going to start the perfect 10, you want to get alive and then uh, start to spread. I would take a uh, pyramid-type approach where you have little horses, and then by the time you get to the last race, you have some coverage. That would be the way I would go about yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to take all in this first race, but I changed my mind just to say I was alive after the first <laughs> leg. But we'll see how that works out. Let's go to the second race. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf. These are made in Phillies and Mass 3 and up $12,500. As we mentioned and Pete mentioned, exact to try. Super effective way during this race. I went with the eight ri river rhythm. Is turning back today to seven and a half furlongs for trainer Alan Jerkins after dueling for the lead between horses. Fading to get beat. Uh, Got beat pretty good in that race, uh, but that was going a mile in the 16th. I've uh, been liking the way this apprentice, Eric Rodriguez, has been riding. So I used number eight river rhythm on top of my ticket, and I see that you went with the number five in here. Yeah, I like the five quite a bit in here, Oriental Secret. These maiden 12-5 races, there's been something very, very consistent about each and every one of them. The horses that have routinely run in those races and taken turns beating each other, like River Rhythm and uh, horses like uh, Adar, Beeline Express, 
they have not really been rising to the occasion, as it were, when somebody who has not been running against this division has come in. Oriental Secret has not been racing against this division. In fact, she's not even been racing in this state. She's coming in from Presque Isle Downs off the tapita surface for trainer Kathleen O'Connell, go-to rider and the all-time leading jockey here at Gulfstream Park West, Eduardo Nunez. He has the call. If you are trying to gauge Eduardo Nunez's recent riding ability, he won the stake at 17-1 to 1 on the turf on Sunday, uh, Saturday afternoon, Nunez is riding very, very well. And Oriental Secret, she has herself to blame should she lose this because she will be in front by herself. She is definitely lone speed. Yeah, on the I didn't know out. how to translate that, uh, you know, that surface to this surface here, but certainly good connections. That three horse you mentioned, Adard, who we both have on our ticket, is dropping uh, to this uh, twelve thousand five hundred dollar level. Turning back slightly, hoping both those adjustments. Uh, it's got a spark, a wake up call here. You got Edgar Zayas for Antonio Sano, the four B line Express, but knocking the door in three consecutive races at this level at a mile and a sixteenth. Uh, uh, you know, just I think this horse sort of fits in there. Uh, Walter Rosas, Knessig got apprentice Arnie Fontanez. Yeah, I just I stayed away from anybody who's been routinely racing in this division. I'm not interested in them, and there's three horses that have not been. You touched on Adar. I touched on Oriental Secret. The other horse is the number two, the way Bell is. She drops from the maiden $30,000 level. She was in at 12-5, two and three starts ago, but in my opinion, that doesn't count because she was not racing two turns on the turf. She was racing one turn on the sprint side of things, which, believe it or not, is actually a stronger version of this race than the two turns on turf. That's they're just kind of the, the rest of uh, kind of horses. The way Bell is for trainer many way are. Klein and Big Racing and Diego Gomez, those are the same folks that brought you Dun One, who they claim for $12,500, and she just ran third in the stake on Saturday. Yeah, I like Dun One, one of my favorite horses. Let's go to the third race, six furlong maiden claimers, two-year-olds, $16,000 in here. Uh, one jockey change looks like hey, Jesus Rios will not be riding again. we got Jonathan Gonzalez on the number four horse. We'd like to go back and show you a race from September 21st, Pete. This is the one of it's not me. Yeah, she she ha he has trouble leaving the starting gate. You can see him there. He just you see that hop at the start. He's the the four horse that afternoon. And now what he has to do is he has to rush up in traffic. And there he is on the outside. I mean, he's in a contending position after all of that. And then uh, well, he just throws out the proverbial anchor after having so much trouble early in the race. Uh, he kind of used a lot of his energy early on that day. The winner of that race, well-regarded winner in G5 for Todd Pletcher. Second choice of the race, a cool union man came back to win. Jojo Cool came back to win. So it's been a very productive race. He also was only defeated seven lengths in his career, unveiling by the very highly regarded Richard the Great, or Ralph Nix. Uh, I think he's a horse in here that does have some upside. I wasn't a huge fan of, this is the same thing with me. I'm not a huge fan of horses, even the two-year-olds that have been racing in the same division. I'm not interested. I'm going for horses that are either first-time starters or horses that are dropping in class like the seven. Here. He's not interested. Speaking of not interested, <laughs> make, make sure you note in today's third race, no pick four, no pick three. Right, and it's a daily double exact to try and superfect the wage. And we'll remind you out throughout the afternoon, once again, using the daily racing fork to handicap uh, the betting uh, profiles are wrong in that race. This, I went with the one purpose. I, I, this one's going to depart from the rail again, hoping to improve on the third place finish at this level and distance. That was a cross down. It was at Gulfstream Park. Easiest spot, I believe, today for trainer Marcus Vitale and Orlando Boca Chica. And I love Orlando Boca Chica when he breaks from an inside post position. So I have purpose on my ticket. Got the seven on my ticket for all the reasons you mentioned. And then went with the five. Dallin Bear, here's one that's plummeting to the $16,000 level for West Ward after showing speed, fading. That was, again, maiden special weight. Looks like that's an angle here. If they drop down big, they usually run well. Yeah, I think that that's definitely the way to go in here. Seven and five, both are the fresh faces in this bunch. Purpose's debut soured me pretty much for the rest of his career. He lost to uh, Valico and Tio Conkey, who uh, I'm not fans of either of theirs, and I think that they would be hard-pressed, at least Tio Conkey would, to be competitive against this field. Uh, so I'm going to go with against purpose, who I figure will take money with hot connections and the endorsement of this guy right here. <laughs> I'm going to use the eight-horse Combrestagio on the outside, a son of Tiago for Marcos Fernandez. Uh, apprentice Eric Rodriguez has the call. He draws a, a pretty decent post position for his debut run today. Figure he'll be a nice number, maybe a horse to use in your daily doubles. Well, let's go to our fourth race. This one is one mile and one-sixteenth on the turf. These are claims three and up. 
$10,000 the claiming level. In this race, exact to try and superfect the wage rate. We want to go back and show you a race from uh, uh, it's October 11th, and it's uh, Tinnitus splitting horses in the stretch, finishing second, beating only a half length. Thought it was a pretty nice performance. It was a pretty nice performance, especially considering he'd only been off a week after flattening out pretty <laughs> bad the week before that. He runs well to Gambling Fever, who was a repeat winner over at Gulfstream Park. This is his second victory in a row, as you see Gambling Fever under Eduardo Nunez. That's Tinnitus running up on the outside under Santiago Gonzalez. He gets a rider switch here today, does Tinnitus to jockey Edgar Zaya. Certainly nothing wrong with that. My concern with him, this is his third race in 16 days. That's asking a whole lot of a horse like this to fire three big shots in 16 days. I'm actually playing against him here. I think this race is very, very competitive. You can make a case for a lot of horses here. Yeah, you went with the number six, uh, Becky's Kitten in there. I did, not not overly confident. Uh, this is a connection play for me. Mar Marcus Vitali and Orlando Boca Chica off the claim. This horse has made a lot of racing money on turf. He's made 400000 in his life, and over half of that was on the turf course, being by Kitten's Joy out of a cozine mare. You know turf's not going to be a problem. He's a four-time turf winner. I'll be interested to see how he performs getting back on the turf after sprinting on the main track. Yeah, and Marcus Vitali, uh, uh, according to uh, the Daily Race, informed that sometimes it's right, but today they're not 22% uh, with uh, first off the claim. Also had the number seven fire mission. We both have it on our ticket. We try to make it two in a row after responding to a drop in competition. Two and a half length win at this level and distance across down at uh, Gulfstream Park. And you look at his record here, four previous races, two wins in a third. So 50% a win percentage here. And you can see that he beat uh, your top play tonight yeah, in right. that race two weeks ago. So uh, he's in good form for David Fox. David's been having a good meeting, getting ready to prep Bahamian Squall for the Breeders' Cup Sprint coming up in a couple of weeks. Another horse to take note of is the three Exeter Road. Uh, we were going to show you his backtrack from way back in May, but uh, I think you thought that was total recall type scenario <laughs> there. Uh, but the point is, is that this horse can really, really fly. And when he's on his best game, he needs pace to chase. But if he swung to the outside and punching home, Turf Course has been playing that way, so he definitely can play a, a big role here. Trainer Eddie Broom comes to town. It's interesting to see Eddie's got a couple of horses in here today. I don't like to play guys off the van, though, So, but uh, Leandro Gonsalves on the grass is always kind of my kind of horse. So on your uh, Perfect Ten ticket, have we been, uh, you know, going too deep, three deep as, as yeah, the first parts? And all? I, I think I think in the my strategy would be uh, too deep, too deep, too deep, and then here in today's fourth race, I got a spread. I got at least four horses that I think have a chance. The two, three, six, and seven. If I agree with you that the eight can fire a shot third time in 16 <laughs> days, I got to use him. And then you really, if you really want to stretch, you can use the 10 Jupiter. He's defeated these horses before, so this is a spread race in the Perfect Ten.